Hey everyone. So what if you already have Windows 7 installed here in this case, or another version of Windows, Windows 8, Windows 10, and unlike the other videos I did, you do not want to actually reinstall your operating system. You actually do want to migrate it from what you got here going and migrate it to your new Samsung 970 Pro SSD. Well, the process actually is pretty straightforward and there's actually software that uh, Samsung did release that can help you out with that. A couple little things here. I am going to be doing that on this computer here using a Windows 7 installation already running for some time now. And uh, there's a few things you need to do before you actually run the software. I'm gonna go ahead and show you that right now. Number one, the driver already has to be installed. So pretty easy to do considering you can actually just go to the Samsung website and download some drivers. Uh, let's say firmware right over here. You can go ahead and just install this uh, piece of software on your Windows 7 installation, in this case, or any other version of Windows you have. And uh, this will actually recognize your SSD. Now, some versions of Windows do actually natively support and recognize M2 drives, NVMe drives. There is a patch that Windows 7 did release, um, Microsoft release for Windows 7, <laughs> that will allow you to do that. But let's just assume you did actually have a PCI device here that's completely unknown. That is your new Samsung drive, and there's a chance that it may not have the driver installed. The Samsung software I just mentioned earlier would actually install that driver for you. So in this case, you do see the controller now. Sorry if that moved up and down the wrong way. With that, now you see the actual Samsung drive as well too. Ignore the other SSD over here because I actually do have an 850 drive in here that I'm gonna be migrating from, but this here is the 970. And once you do all that, just confirm one more thing. Let's go to my computer and just do manage. Let's move this over here. Go to Disk Management, and you will see all your disks here, your main OS. Here I also have a mechanical hard drive as well running, and there is the 970 Pro ready to go. In this case, it's a 512 gigabyte uh, chip that I've been uh, showing you uh, and installing in other computers already. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this software here as well too. Go back to the Samsung drive all the way up here. We are looking for the data migration software. Go ahead and download this. And this is it right here. The obstructions are basically just in a bunch of other languages, but this is what you're looking for here. Go ahead and download it and install, which uh, I pretty much already did here. Here's the software. And here it is, installation. Pretty easy installation, shouldn't take any more than a minute. And we can go ahead, open up and start migrating our, and cloning our, basically our drive. This is just basically a cloning software in the end, you know, geared more to Samsung drives. Uh, I've actually used other cloning software like Acronis, um, Norton Ghost, even years, years before that. Pretty much does the job. Obviously, you know, you may or may not be able to pick up your NVMe um, drive off the M2 slot. So this software will basically just avoid any of that particular issues you may run into. So we'll go ahead and open up this uh, software and clone our drive. Go ahead and open this up once it's installed. And here you have already, you're actually not gonna be cloning as soon as you hit start, so don't worry about it, because obviously people may freak out. Oh, what am I cloning to what to what? <laughs> Just press start and you'll get all those options here. So here you have source. Go ahead and move the camera correctly here. Your source drive, this is basically what you're copying from, and your target drive, where you're copying to. So obviously it seems like it populated automatically. I am copying from my Samsung 850 SSD to my Samsung 970 NVMe drive right here. So if you were to go ahead and change this, um, there's an option to do so, but this is basically what I'm looking for. So seems like uh, we're good to go. Obviously, you know, it'll probably give you a warning in the moment that everything in your target drive is going to be empty and wiped out. Obviously this drive is already empty anyway. So oh, there it is. I'll go ahead and hit yes. Do you want to start cloning? 
This actually should run fairly quick considering it's SSD to SSD. You're getting speeds of 500 megabytes a second plus. So you can see over here, let's see if I can actually get a little closer there. Megabyte per second speed is increasing and increasing and increasing. So imagine we were cloning from M2 drive to M2 drive, you know, they usually have like uh, 1500 megabytes a second or more. I actually have cloned SSD to SSD before using software like Acronis. And um, usually it doesn't even take more than four minutes. And I'm talking about 256 or 512 gigabyte SSDs. So you can already see this is already, I already had 2%. Um, the megabytes per second speed just seems to be keep going up and going up. But right now it's kind of slowing down to like 132, 133 megabytes a second. So anyway, I'll go ahead and uh, skip over to when this process is almost complete. I will definitely be doing a benchmark after this is done with the NV ME Samsung 970 Pro, just to see if the speeds are pretty comparable to uh, others. And obviously I'm pretty sure they will be good uh, 3500 write a read and around 2500 or a little bit less write speeds. So, all right, so here we can see the process is almost done. Uh, it did take longer than I thought it would, but then again, it's not like this thing's going to continuously be reading at 500 megabytes a second. <laughs> so it's usually been uh, bouncing between 170 and 180 for, I would say, the last uh, five or 10 minutes. Seems like the whole process is going to take about just a little under 25 minutes. So we're almost done here. I'll definitely give it a reboot. And uh, I'm gonna have to change the boot order. It's another thing. Once this whole process is done and you're ready to reboot, go ahead and go into the BIOS and make sure your 970 Pro is now your main boot device over whatever other drive you originally were booting from. In this case, my, my uh, Samsung 850 Pro SSD. Just about done here. Let's see what else it's going to do after this is uh, over. Go ahead and move the camera a little closer there. You did notice I did close all the windows and everything. Uh, I did actually reread that message right over here in red. So I closed as many of applications as I could. And uh, seems like everything was uh, successful. Probably a good idea to close any applications you possibly can. You know, all that stuff that's hanging out down there. So, uh, all right. Let's uh, go ahead and give a reboot. Go ahead and close this. Yep. Restart here. And I'll just go ahead into the BIOS. Hit the delete key over and over and over. Okay, so here we are in the BIOS. Just go ahead and uh, readjust the camera here a little bit. And um, right now our main boot device is still the 850 Pro. Let's go here, just go to boot. Obviously your BIOS will definitely be looking different, but your main boot device will be the 8, 970 Pro. Um, gotta do one little different step here. Go to hard drive, and there we go. This will be our main boot device, and I'll just disable everything else. Go back to boot, and just confirm again. 970 Pro is our main boot device, and USB thumb drives is secondary. So, go ahead and make that change, whether you're booting Legacy into Windows 7, or UEFI into Windows 10, or Windows 8. And I'll go ahead and uh, save settings here, and go ahead and do reboot. Getting that NVMe driver in Windows is definitely very critical if your OS does not support the NVMe by default.
Well, I can definitely tell you that was definitely a much faster boot. Um, just trying to see if there's any new hardware being picked up, which sometimes happens when you plug in new hard drives. And so far, I don't see anything new. And other than my icons readjusting themselves all over, seems like we have success here. Go ahead and go to manage this management, and you will see that. These two drives actually look pretty much exactly the same. So I am going to go ahead and install the benchmarking software and we'll run a quick benchmark. Got Crystal Disk Mark installed here. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this just one way. Just put the blue color since this is an Intel computer. Again, here we have the Samsung drive and the controller when we installed install that driver earlier. Whatever uh, particular drive you have. Um, so, just an FYI, this actually isn't only for Samsung NVMEs. You can actually use a very similar process. Um, not sure if you can use a Samsung software, but other softwares can definitely do a very similar process for you. Even whether it's in Windows or actually out of Windows, some people will probably say that cloning drives may actually be better to do when you're actually not logged into Windows so certain files don't like goof off or change while it's actually cloning. Go ahead and run this. I will tell you that when I opened Firefox, since I left it open uh, running the benchmark, uh, when I opened Firefox uh, over here, it actually popped up the same page, the Samsung page I had open as if the Firefox crashed. So. If I left it closed, it would have just op opened up to my home page. So that's not something to keep in mind when uh, when you do this, if you're actually doing it while in Windows already. You know, if you do have stuff open, certain files may not be saved. So in this case, when I closed Firefox, the while I was cloning it, basically the cloned OS, which is <laughs> what I'm using right now, thought Firefox uh, crashed. Kind of hard to explain, but if you think about it, I think you might get the gist of what I'm talking about. Speed numbers are looking good yet again, over 3,500 read, and I'm guessing it's probably gonna be around 2,300 or so right. So it looks like this is actually turned to be a really great success. And obviously a really good option. Um, you did notice in another video of mine, I actually fresh installed Windows 7 on the Samsung NVMe drive. I was planning to reinstall Windows on that computer anyway. You know, they do say it's not a bad idea to do a fresh installation of Windows. There were a couple of one or two little glitches that were just bugging me. And I went ahead and just reinstalled everything anyway. So that worked out pretty good and definitely was entertaining to you guys and for me for sure. Did do a fresh Windows and 7 installation on a Ryzen based PC. Slightly different method, but for the 95% of the whole thing was pretty much the same and now we have here a cloned OS of Windows 7 into the 970 Pro with success and absolutely the same amazing speeds we've seen before. So really awesome technique to do this and now basically what I'm going to do is shut the computer off, yank out the old 850 Samsung drive that I have and we're gonna reallocate that to a family's computer whose SSD 256 is running low on space. And meanwhile, I now have this really amazing drive. I'm actually looking forward to see if it has any issue on video rendering when I'm using uh, Adobe Premiere Pro or whatnot. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. I will tell you that the prices on NVMe drives have come down a bit, maybe they're I would say within like 20 to $25 range of their just regular SATA SSD counterparts. So something to keep in mind if you're actually looking to buy a new SSD and you actually do have an M2 slot available. So in this case, it's a huge difference between 550 megabytes a second and 3,500. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, by all means, shoot a like. If you really found this interesting, shoot a like again. I wish you could. Got any questions or problems doing a method like this? Go ahead and let me know. Subscribe if you'd like as well too. I'll definitely be shooting more videos. 
I know I did a couple of videos already on the 970 Pro, but there's a couple of options when dealing with a little new drive like this, so I thought I'd go ahead and give all that I could and every particular idea. If you have any other ideas what I could do with this drive, let me know. You might see a video pop up about it. Take care.